Hey guys, it's me. Um, so I'm doing something different today. I'm doing a voiceover instead of just blasting my choice of music over a normal speed paint like I normally do. Um, I recently got a microphone from one of my roommates, so I thought I should probably use this gift as much as I can. So, yeah, it's it's gonna be a little weird because I, I normally don't like the sound of my voice. So that's why I don't include it in a lot of things, but um, I might as well try this out. So, today I'm going to be going over my first semester of college in sort of a review. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am 18 years of age. I'm currently attending an art college where I am pursuing a bachelor's degree in animation. So, right off the bat, I'm surrounded by people whose skill levels are leagues above my own. <laughs> some kids had even came in from some of those art high schools. Um, you know, like, the ones from Victorious? Does referencing Victorious make me old yet? Fuck. I truly felt like a little fish in a big pond. Especially since my major is the largest major at my school, and all I could think when I first saw how big my major was, was, oh god, how do I make sure I stand out from the rest of them? Towards the end of the semester, I kind of realized that hyper-focusing on how other people are doing doesn't really help myself and my own work. It was really nice, too, to see that a majority of people that I look up to and, in a way, idolize felt the same way about their work. Hell, I even got a s few people saying that they look up to my work. To which I would reply with a very confused, What? <laughs> like, it's, it's really weird to me to think that there are some people who look at what I can do and, like, actually admire it. But I'm sure, you know, the people that I look up to feel the same way at this point. So, <laughs> it, it was a pretty interesting experience overall. Another thing that, um, that I'm gonna take to heart for next semester and coming semesters, um, I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to be having my schedule completely filled up every day of the week because that was the worst mistake I've ever made. It was terrible. I hated it. I, I absolutely hated it. When I put together my class schedule, I decided, hmm, having five classes and having them fill up every weekday, it, it can't be that bad, can it? It is. It's very, very, very bad. Don't ever do it. Please. I, I suffered enough. You so don't make the same mistakes as I did. Like, dude. <laughs> I couldn't do so many things, like, I really wish that I had, had given at least Friday off for myself, but no, no, I was a dumbass, so don't be like me. I'm, I'm never doing that ever again, it was the worst mistake that I could have made, but that's what you do in college, you learn from your mistakes. Honestly, my thought process behind putting a class in every weekday for myself was just it can't be that bad of a transition to do it from high school to do it from college because I, I was just so used to having to go to school every day of the week and that be that um in college you really don't have to fucking do that so <laughs> yeah in college, you don't have to have a class every day of the week because you have so much more freedom. Like, 
I, I guess that's what I really wasn't used to. I really wasn't used to having so much freedom to do whatever I wanted to do. And now I really appreciate it, and I'm definitely going to be using it for the upcoming fall semester. <laughs> um, for this semester, <laughs> I'm gonna have a four-day weekend, so <laughs> YOLO, guys! It really wasn't until I actually sat down to plan out my schedule <laughs> for my spring semester because I didn't sit down and plan out my fall semester. I thought everything would be fine. Everything would be fine, guys. Just fine. But it wasn't fine. <laughs> but um, when I sat down and looked over my spring semester, I was really confident and was like, wow wow, this is probably going to be a good semester for me because I I'm not overworking myself to the bone and killing myself. Because now I know six-hour classes suck and so do planning your schedule to have a class every day of the week. I'm never fucking doing that again, Jesus Christ. That's another thing that I want to go over and talk about. So... Um, so in art co college, you get studio classes, and studio classes can range from being like three hours to six hours long. Six hour long classes fucking suck. Okay, I had one six hour class this semester. It was my drawing one class, so that would. I had to draw for six hours with a 30 minute break in between. I learned a lot from the class, I enjoyed the class, but I was so exhausted by the end of it. I didn't want to do anything by the end of it. Thank god it was a Friday, because I don't know what I would have done if my six hour class was like in the middle of the week. Because I, I know I would just be too exhausted to do anything. Just six hour classes they really wear you down uh, especially when you're in a drawing class because you know when you're just sitting down and drawing and doing your own thing at home you can do that for hours and it doesn't seem like much the difference is you can get up and you can be in a comfortable seat do you know what you sit in in a drawing one class you sit in the drawing horses for those of you who don't know a drawing horse is this sort of bench thingy that they made that you can use to prop up your drawing <laughs> materials on and sit down while you draw a model or a set that, that anything that a teacher really has you draw. And <laughs> They're uncomfortable. There is no back support. Like, if you have back problems, you're going to suffer. They suck. <laughs> I already have back problems because I'm an animation major, so I'm hunched over a screen, like, 24-7. It's lots of fun. But, good god, sitting in these fucking drawing horses just really was bad for my lower back, and... I was- I just needed to take a nap most of the time when I came home from my drawing one class. <laughs> what you're seeing on screen is actually um, me recreating a moment from my drawing one class. Um, we were using graphite to draw a model and graphite, as many of you may know, is a very <laughs> dirty <laughs> material to work with, especially when you're trying to blend to create shadows, like really soft shadows and all that, but there were like a lot of kids in my class f that for some reason they didn't really want to get their hands dirty, which I'm like, you know, whatever, <laughs> you do you boo boo. <laughs> I don't really mind getting my hands dirty, like I just think that's a part of the art experience, but I know there are some people that need to have everything in order and clean when they're making art. I don't know how they do it, but they do it anyway. But anyway, my <laughs> my my drawing one professor, she like 
was talking to one of them off the side and I didn't really pay much attention to it until she said very loudly, if you don't have graphite on your hands, you're not working hard enough. And I just it was like, wow, she, she's really getting serious here. I don't know, it was just a funny moment that really stuck with me till even after the class has ended. My drawing one professor was also really weird and eccentric overall. <laughs> like, like I, re I really enjoyed her class, but good god, she was really weird. <laughs> she gave us a plant to take care of and like started saying things like the plants can communicate with us and we were told that we were going to be graded on how well we took care of the plant. That never really happened, but still, it was- she was odd, <laughs> but I, I- I do enjoy her. <laughs> A lot of people don't really like her though. I- I think it's just because of like, just how eccentric she can be, but you know, I- I don't mind. <laughs> Art school professors, just in general, are really weird. Like, the stereotype is very accurate. Like, professors in art schools are odd. And it, it didn't help that I'm also going to school in the Bay Area, which is also a very odd place. <laughs> the stereotype is pretty accurate. If you live in the Bay Area or go to the Bay Area just for school or anything, chances are you're kind of a weird person. <laughs> That's kind of the reputation that the Bay Area has. So I already told you about, you know, my drawing one professor who was really weird and odd, gave us a plant and everything. I'm actually going to be seeing her next semester for my... <laughs> For, for another one of my classes, so that should be fun. But, um, I also had another professor. He was my 3D core class person, <laughs> professor, sorry. And, um, he was a little weird too. He was kind of like a wannabe hippie. <laughs> like, it, it, you could tell that he really tried hard to seem like he was a cool and relatable person, but it just came off as really fake. Like, dude, you- <laughs> we would like you so much more if you didn't come off as so disingenuous to us. Like, you, you don't need to get our approval. <laughs> Dude legit came in, first day of class, sick as all hell, he let us all out early, which we were all fine with, you know? Like, this class is, starts at 4 and ends at 7, so we were like, damn, this is pretty great, I don't have to stay out until 7pm, so I was- we were all pretty glad, and I think that was the most genuinely cool moment? that that teacher had with us all, but then, you know, <laughs> throughout the rest of the semester, you could tell that he was really struggling to try and get a hold of the class, so it, it was just an uphill battle for him and for the rest of us. He, overall, he was a chill sort of guy, I just wish that he didn't he, he, I just wish he wasn't so much of a tryhard. <laughs> I had another one of those tryhard professors in one of my lecture classes. The biggest difference between like her and my other professor is that the way that she tried just made everyone in the room uncomfortable. Like we were all just afraid to speak in this lecture class and we were heavily encouraged to speak up and participate but just the way that she said things and carried herself it just made a very awkward environment that kind of just stilted any sort of conversation from happening my other two professors they were really chill though my animation professor she was really dope like, she, she gave a lot of insight to, like, the industry and just the basics of animation that we all need to know. Um, <laughs> I always felt like I was trying to prove myself to her, just because 
I was surrounded by so many amazing people who just seemed like they were doing so much better in the class than I was. But uh, apparently she really liked my stuff. Like, she she was really digging, like, the, the sort of character designs that I would do and the worlds and stories that I wanted to tell, which just makes me feel so much better. <laughs> like, oh, oh, holy shit, I can actually get a job and people will listen to me, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it just felt really nice to have somebody validate your ideas, and it, it did give me a lot of drive to actually start showing the ideas that I had. Because before um, a certain project where we had to do a walk cycle and design a certain type of character, I tried to keep all of my personal art projects to myself. I wasn't really planning on putting them into any of my <laughs> school projects, but then, you know, I decided, hey, I'm gonna put this little itty bitty character in my character design project where I'm going to do a walk cycle and I'll, I'll talk about that and everybody just seemed to really enjoy it and wanted more from it like they, they started asking me more stuff about you know the concepts that I had which it, it was really refreshing and nice to hear that and it gave me a lot of I guess drive to push forward like wow people actually like my stuff that's it, it was it's it was a really encouraging experience my last professor was just my art history professor she was pretty chill i got a lot of insight on it and she was really enthusiastic about the topic like i could tell that she genuinely cared about history which i don't know, i i'm a history nerd so i I really love history and it's just really nice when you see other people who share that same passion as you do. I guess the last thing that I want to go over in this semester summary thing is I really just can't believe that there are so many people who just didn't care about being in the classes that they were in. Like, <laughs> it's... It's a lot of money to go to college, and it's a lot of money to go to art college, especially. And I just saw that there was so many students who, like, would fall asleep in class all the time, or would end up late, or they just didn't even turn in any of their assignments. Like, I knew a, a kid who came into class, like, late every single class. like. And the thing is, like, he didn't even live far away. Like, he lived on campus. He just didn't care. And I was like, dude, you're paying to go to these classes. Why aren't you taking them seriously? Like, you know that nine lates equal out to, like, three abstinences. And three abstinences, at least at our college, means that you automatically fail that class. And this is a big class, it's a, it's a fundamental class that you have to complete by the end of your freshman year. So, I just, it was really weird to be in that sort of environment where there are a lot of people who aren't paying attention in their class, and it just didn't seem to matter to them. Sure, I, I would experience that sort of thing in high school, but nobody chooses to go to high school <laughs> like it's a requirement you have to do this but you're choosing to go to art college you're choosing to do this like you're paying money to be here <laughs> and you're just gonna waste time and be like really disrespectful during critiques and just play on your phone and watch videos during class like I, come on but Maybe that'll change, I guess, w once we get past all these core fundamental classes that we all have to do freshman year. At least at my college, what we have to do is we have, like, these four core classes that we have to take 
along with like a writing class and a critical studies class and just an art history class for like ancient art history and modern art history but still it's like I guess I guess maybe things will change after freshman year we'll see if not I'm I guess I'll just continue to be confused as to why people are still there like if you're really not satisfied with being there then drop the class <laughs> stop or stop coming to school I don't know <laughs> And that has been my semester summary. I think I'm gonna turn this into a series thing where after every semester I just do a little summary video. I don't know, it depends on <laughs> how this video does. I've never really done a voiceover before, so tell me if you like it or tell me what I need to improve on. I know I probably sound really awkward and terrible, it's because I'm awkward and terrible at recording myself and I have no idea how to actually work a microphone and make it sound decent. So, yeah. I'm also sorry for just all the ums and pauses that may or may not be included in all of this. I did this with like just a little itty bitty script where it was just bullet points for me to go over so we'll see how that goes. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning into my video, and I hope you liked it. And if you didn't like it, please let me know so that I can improve my content in the future. Go ahead, roast me in the comments. I want this, please. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.